In 1860, Christmas was more of a quiet religious holiday. New Year's was the central winter holiday, but most Americans still celebrated it and decorated for the occasion. Although we don't know exactly how, or even if, the Lincolns decorated for Christmas, typical decorations, as we can see here in the Lincoln home, included evergreen garlands of pine, spruce, hemlock, or laurel over mantles, picture frames, chandeliers, and door and window frames. Wreaths may have been found on doors, mistletoe balls overhead, and holly centerpieces on the table. Decorations were often put up December 24th and kept up for the 12 days of Christmas. The traditional Yule log and Christmas candle were starting to fade out of use, but Christmas trees were starting to get popular around this time. The tradition was brought to the United States by German immigrants, who were typically tabletop trees instead of the floor-to-ceiling ones we imagine today, and were decorated with colored paper, paper cutouts, candles, sweets, fruits, strings of cranberry or popcorn, and small presents. For the Lincoln family, Abraham Lincoln was often very busy with his law practice, even during Christmas time, so Mary was in charge of any holiday activities. We aren't sure if the Lincolns had a Christmas tree, but their good friends and neighbors, the Remans, may have had one. In addition, the Lincoln family may have enjoyed visiting the handsome Christmas tree at the First Presbyterian Church. Attending church services was a popular Christmas activity, and many churches had special Christmas events or services, which the Lincoln boys would have undoubtedly enjoyed. But it is my guess that the Lincoln boys' favorite holiday tradition wasn't the tree, but the presents. The holiday season is never really complete without some sort of gift giving. And the Lincolns were no different. Now, one common thing that still happens even today is the gift of stockings. And the Lincoln boys would have received a wide variety of gifts in their stockings. The boys would have received things like books, toy soldiers, and wooden animals like these. And of course, these red items. Although these look like small sticks of dynamite, these are firecrackers that would have been given to the boys. You can imagine their excitement when they found these in their stockings. One of the most common places for stockings to hang are above the fireplace. And probably one of our most unique things here at Lincoln Home are these. These are the original holes for where the stockings would have hung for the boys. Now that's pretty neat. Like Ranger Isaiah showed us, the act of giving gifts played a very important part in the Lincoln home, just like it does in our home today. While the Lincoln children enjoyed opening their gifts, their oldest son, Robert, would enjoy a gift more attuned for a young, fledging gentleman. This issue of Young Men's Magazine dates back to the year 1857 and would have made a perfect gift for a young gentleman like Robert. While his younger brothers play with toys that develop their young minds, a gift such as this magazine served as a way to develop young men as they went into adulthood. This particular issue covers various topics, ranging from rules for keeping accounts to life lessons and moral courage and finding faults in oneself. There's even a philosophical look at man's position in the universe, should any young man have that burning question. Much like today, no magazine would be complete without an advertisement, such as this one here for Singer Sewing Machines. And if one should feel the need to start spouting poetry, short quips are even included within the magazine. I'm sure some of these went a long way in helping Robert land his wife, Mary Harlan. Now we've all heard the saying that it is better to give than to receive. And I have no doubt in my mind that Abraham Lincoln lived by this mantra as we see in the gifts that he gave to his hired girls. Abraham was always known as a very giving employer, even to the hired girls. Reportedly, he was even generous enough to purchase a wedding dress for one of the hired girls. In this case, if we take a look at the personal finances of Abraham Lincoln, we see a purchase logged in for December 24th, Christmas Eve. Among the list of items is a series of handkerchiefs, ranging from child handkerchiefs to handkerchiefs for gentlemen. Included is a purchase of four linen handkerchiefs, which would have made a perfect gift for a hired girl. As we learned, Abraham Lincoln was very generous in his gift giving, but he also got some pretty cool gifts as well. To learn about that, we're going to talk to Ranger Woodhead. When it comes to gift giving, I believe Abraham Lincoln would have been the easiest person to give gifts to. A good book would have been a perfect gift for him. In fact, both Abraham and Mary enjoy receiving books as gifts. 
For example, a few days after Christmas in 1860, Mary received, and I quote, handsome books from Samuel B. Holliday, author of this book, The Lost and Found Book, or Life Among the Poor. On December 31st, 1860, Mary wrote to Mr. Holliday, thanking him for the gift and to let him know how much she also enjoyed reading a copy of The Lost and Found. Mr. Holliday had given a similar copy to the one we have here today to Mr. Lincoln when they met in New York at a school for children in need, known then as the Five Points House of Industry. For the Lincolns, the holidays in 1860 were completely different compared to previous years. Soon after Lincoln was elected president in November, Lincoln admirers arrived to the Lincoln home to congratulate the new president-elect. And during the holidays, gifts from his admirers arrived too. The Lincoln home suddenly was inundated with gifts of all kinds, shapes, and sizes. For example, mill workers from Cleveland gifted Abraham Lincoln a Model T rail, while a New York politician who admired Lincoln gave him a limited edition bronze medal of Henry Clay. Even clothing made it to the Lincoln home. From hats to elegant overcoats, we can just imagine Lincoln's wardrobe getting packed each day. With his usual sense of humor, Lincoln told Mary that one thing likely to come out of this was that they were going to have new clothes. One particular item that was given to Lincoln during the last holiday season he spent at home in Springfield was this regular wall clock that we have in our collection. This clock was made by the E. Howard & Company. It is a walnut wooden case with round glass cover clock face. This type of clock was made starting around 1857. The National Society of Colonial Dames in America purchased the clock for the Lincoln home in 1953. It was purchased from the daughter of Anne Todd Smith, Mary's younger sister. The donor said the Lincolns gave her father, Clark Smith, the clock when they left for Washington in 1861. Gifts giving was not the only holiday tradition the Lincolns enjoyed at home. A holiday season wouldn't be the same without a tasty holiday meal. Let's go with Ranger Bryson to see what the Lincolns would have eaten during the holidays. Sitting down to a freshly prepared meal with family is one of the holiday season's greatest joys. And it is highly likely that the Lincoln family also enjoyed this tradition. Mrs. Lincoln would have prepared a smaller meal just for the family on Christmas and a large feast for New Year's to be shared with all who would come and visit the home in an open house, buffet-style setup. In Ms. Eliza Leslie's book, The Lady's New Receipt, she lists a holiday menu for both Christmas and New Year's. We know that Mrs. Lincoln had this book along with Ms. Leslie's directions for cookery in its various branches. Here we have a spread that is based off of those two menus, a menu from a New Year's meal at the White House during the Lincoln's presidency, common traditions of the time, and the Lincoln's financial records. Here we have roast beef, ham and rolls, roasted chicken, Cornish game hens, asparagus, carrots, peas, pickles, mashed potatoes and gravy, and oysters shipped all the way up the Mississippi from New Orleans. On the dessert table, there's pumpkin pie, a yule log, macaroon pyramid, fruits, nuts, and of course, Mrs. Lincoln's famous white almond cake. The centerpiece is an orange pyramid. It is made from oranges decorated with clove and star anise, cinnamon sticks, bayberry, kumquats, and other various herbs. It would have been quite fragrant. It is held together by a sugar water glue and toothpicks. Interestingly enough, when the clove pierces the skin of the orange, the oils mixed together create a poison, so it would not to be eaten. It is likely that this beautiful pyramid met its demise at the hands of the Henry Lincoln boys, or perhaps the paws of cats that roam the house. Springfield during the Christmas season would have had various decorations of Christmas trees and wreaths, while a blanket of snow would cover the streets and the outer prairies. Indoors, one can only imagine the hustle and bustle of exciting children opening their gifts and adults having their opportunity to visit with friends and family. When one would enter the Lincoln home, they would see sights of greenery and smells of roasted ham and orange with clothes in them. 
And over the 17 years that the Lincolns lived here, they left artifacts, stories, and memories for us to share. Now on behalf of the staff here at Lincoln Home, we'd like to wish you all happy holidays and a very happy new year. Wait, what? Are we going? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now one cannot imagine the yada yada yada. <laughs> Ever have <laughs> All right. Think of your bedroom back at home. Is it this big? Probably not. <laughs> Curator is basically the the keeper of stuff, <laughs> for lack of a better description. 